Welcome to the program, A New Race of Humanity, a series of interviews with Baha'is from around the world, talking about their professional life and also their personal lives, and the inspiration uh, that the faith has had uh, an impact on their uh, various work uh, and any other impact that they've made to humanity. Uh, we're here with uh, Dieter Schroeder, and we'd like to uh, thank Dieter for being here with us today. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how Dieter became a Baha'i and uh, what impact he's been able to make on his profession and how the Baha'i faith informs his view, uh, his world view, so to speak. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about education and also uh, the sciences. Uh, thank you, Dieter, very much for being with us. It's, it's a pleasure. You're welcome. Uh, I'd like to ask you um, a little bit about this field that you're involved in. Is that electrical engineering? Yes, I'm involved in electrical engineering. Uh, I used to work in industry in a research lab and for the last 29 years I've been in the education area at Arizona State University teaching in electrical engineering. You've been teaching at Arizona State University since 1981? Right. And do you think that our educational system in the United States is coping with the fast pace of development, uh, the changing global environment. And do you think that the educational system uh, will train and prepare the student for the future? Well, I think the <clears throat> problem we have in this country is that high school, grade school and high school education lags somewhat behind other countries. But once students graduate from high school and get into universities, then we are even or ahead of most other countries. So I think the university education well prepares people from, for, global, for the global industry, for the global economy. And you can notice that especially by many of our graduate students in engineering at least come from other countries. And the, the desire is still to come to the US. For example, we had a visit from Abu Dhabi uh, last week and Abu Dhabi is trying to change the economy from oil economy to something else. And they're investing quite heavily into high tech, for example. They're investing $16 billion right now mm. into high tech. And they have very few educated people in that area. So they're looking for United States universities to send their students to be educated here. They, uh, putting aside about 10,000 scholarships eventually to come mainly to the U.S. So they're looking at English-speaking countries, of which the U.S. Is, is the largest one that they're looking at. And so I think that's an indication that the U.S. is still the country people want to come to to be educated for higher education, mainly for graduate school. So you think the rest of the world is trying to e emulate that? Experience. I think so. Many other university systems in other countries are in fact changing towards the U.S. system. Germany, for example, and, and other countries are, are leaning more towards the U.S. system. Yes, yeah, so I think higher education, we are very well off. Uh, lower grades, not so well, but there are efforts underway now through the Bush uh, plan originally and now the Obama plan of race to the top. The intent is to improve the education system at the high school and the grade school level also. So you're seeing that efforts are starting to be made to... I think so. I think people realize in this country that the educational system has to be improved. Uh, the teacher system, the, the uh, uh, salaries for teachers have to be improved for the lower grades, K-12. And I think it's all right now in the process of doing it. But it's a slow process. Also, there are now charter schools and private schools, and they're all aimed in, in this direction to improve the education. Now, you mentioned uh, Germany. Now, you worked in Germany for a while and traveled there? Yeah, I grew up there originally, and then uh, after many years of being away, we went back for one year. And uh, in fact, at that time, we, ha we have two boys at that time. They were teenagers, so they had to go to German school. Mm. And they found it difficult because of their language. They weren't used to their language. And the school system actually was not quite what I had remembered when I went to school. It was much looser, for example. <laughs> much more rowdy than, than what I was used to. 
Um, and I don't think it was all that different from the U.S. high school classes, at least, that our children went through. So as far as our uh, education system compared to Germany, is there any particular element that in the uh, United States education is making it so successful in comparison with what's around the world? Yeah, I think it's the, the freedom. For example, we often rank the other uh, bachelor degrees from other countries more highly or the university systems more highly in Asian countries, for example. What happens, however, is in those countries they have these huge exams at the end of the high school, for example, to get into the right university system. And the problem with that is it's mainly memorization. So the students spend hours and hours memorizing uh, material for the test. And so it's a question of memorizing but not really understanding or not really thinking about it. And in fact, I have some friends from Korea who have sent their children here, even in high school, to mm. go to school here. Uh, not that our schools are academically better, but the freedom and, and the ability to think is fostered more in this country than in those countries. Mm. And I think ultimately that reflects on society because when you look today at the, at the high tech industry, for example, the one that I'm most familiar with, most of the inventions still come from this country. They don't come from China, they don't come from India, they don't even come from Europe. Mm. And I think that is partially due to the sort of the freedom of thinking and, and the looseness in, in that sense in this country, where it's much more structured in the other countries. The other countries are very good in manufacturing and taking our ideas and making things out of it. But the ideas often come from this, in this country. When you look back, and even in the last few years, when you look at the, the, the phones, the cell phones, uh, uh, the, the, the high-tech, the cameras, all of those things were invented in this country, the digital cameras and so on. Uh, television, whatever you can think of, almost was invented in this country. So they may have, been, they may be built uh, in Asia or something, but they were maybe designed. Yeah, many of them are. So the manufacturing is done often outside the country, partly because of the cost involved. Mm. But the inventions still largely come from this country. Of course, that has big implications on the employment in this country because the manufacturing, which has largely disappeared in in many areas, not totally. The U.S. still manufactures a lot. Uh, but uh, certainly not as much as we did in the past. And, yeah, and that will sure. probably never change. What do you think can be done to train more globally conscious professionals in the United States? Well, I, as I tell my students in, in my classes, that the competition that they face when they graduate will not just be the engineer down the hallway or in another city, but it will be the engineer in Beijing and in Bangalore. And so they should therefore educate themselves more globally, learn a la another language if possible, and I usually tell them in the high-tech area they should ch learn Chinese, uh, become familiar with cultural aspects from other countries, and uh, just not to, ha not to have a most, such a provincial view of, of things. And so we talk about diversity, for example, uh, I just had in, in, the, uh, in the freshman course, which I te teach this semester, I just talked about diversity, uh, about different cultures and, and different colored skins and, and so on and what it means to people. And uh, travel if they can as much as possible. Uh, be associated with people from other countries, which is not difficult to do in, in our universities here. So I think they realize uh, what they're facing Plus, I instill in them, uh, try to instill in them a work ethic, mm. namely uh, people in these countries work very hard. They often are not as well off economically, and they work hard to, to get somewhere. And uh, so many of them may have had an easier life, but it won't be that easy once they graduate. Yeah. Statistics show uh, in that many people are not attending college. Uh, in your opinion, what are the preventative factors for young adults in this country, at least, to attend college? I think many of them are not prepared from high school to go to college. Uh, approximately 60% of, of high school students go to college, but unfortunately, even of the ones that go to college, not all of them graduate. 
So the fraction that graduate is actually quite small. On the other hand, I don't think everybody should go to college. I think everybody should have a high school education. And uh, one of the Baha'i tenets is compulsory education. And I think everybody should go through grade and high school. That's right. Because without high school, it's virtually impossible to make a living today. But college is not necessary for everybody. We need tradespeople. Uh, so I think two-year colleges or trade school would be very useful. For example, in Germany, they have a system where they, where they teach people in industry. Uh, so you graduate from high school or maybe with one year of college or no years of college, and the company tra uh, teaches you and trains you in what they want, and, and they have various levels, and that works very well. So I don't think everybody has to go to college. Uh, because we would be too, I think, too overqualified a population. And uh, we have a fair fraction of people going to college. Now, why don't the others go to college? It's partly preparation. I think part of it is cultural. Mm. And, uh, for example, I think in the Southwest here, for example, where a larger and larger fraction of the population will be Hispanic, the, the tradition in the in the homes and among friends is not necessarily higher education. And that makes it difficult for them to go to, go to school. They're not prepared and they don't have the uh, reinforcement from home. Unfortunately, as that population grows, that is our future. And so if that future is not very well educated, then we may have a problem. There's a sort of a, an apathy, you know, along, especially in some of our systems here in the United States which in many other countries, like the country that my family uh, comes from, Switzerland, not too far from Germany, uh, the, the gilding process or the apprentice, uh, uh, you know, you get to work with somebody who's in that field and s spend time with them, that might help alleviate that. Uh, we have technical schools in the United States. Yeah, we don't have the apprenticeship system here as well as it is in some European countries. Um, companies still train the people themselves, but it's more sure. informal over in those countries. It's more in Europe, it's more formal, for example. They spend a few years doing menial things, but learning things that, are, that pertain to the company, that are important to the company. Uh, and so they're very well prepared afterwards. And so the craftsmen in these countries are very well prepared, whereas ours are perhaps not quite as well prepared, and sometimes at least. Right. Well, that's a, that's a very good point, actually.